back to Dad Meat, bitch. Tim Butterly, Danny Dubs, Rob what? Cruz. Boys. What's up? Somber mood, man. Diddy Dubs. I know. We're it's Diddy Dubs over here. Tim, I mean, there's just so much uh, death, despair, destruction. Turmoil. Dude, it's like, I mean, you're the first person I thought of when I found out that <laughs> a ship with 22 <laughs> Indian dudes on board ruined Baltimore. That was the detail that made me think it might not be terrorists. No, it's not, dude. They no, were definitely just all not. staring at an iPad. Oh, yeah. Nobody was at the helm. There was probably a lady in a skirt walking across the bridge. <laughs> and the captain was like, oh, yes, ma'am. I was thinking they were having issues and no one was there for tech support. Oh, my uh, God. <laughs> they were holding the boat. Did, they could turn the boat off and back on. <laughs> no, that's terrible. But, I mean, we will get the insider footage because apparently they were filming season one of Smelliest Catch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, all right. In the Titanic, uh, do you think when they knew they were about to hit the bridge instead of like, uh, you know how like the 9-11 dudes were like calling their wives like, look, babe, it's not looking good. I just want to let you know I love you a lot. Do you think like all the Indian dudes on board were like messaging Facebook bot accounts be like, look, it's oh, not nice, good, man. babe. <laughs> oh, please. Show me boobs now, please. <laughs> Take off Bowers, please. <laughs> please always remember me as a really good bad boy. <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, man, they're the best. Yeah. I mean, obviously, obviously something, this is all bad. Duh. Yeah. Yeah. It's all bad, duh. And I think the traffic's going to back up all the way to here, so it is going to affect Oh, us, my God. You know? Yeah. You you leave even further south. Dude, you're fucked. I know. Actually, I don't know. I don't know where the bridge is. <laughs> no, I don't know what it no, connects. They said it's, to take 95 because... Because uh, the bridge is out? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we live close enough to Baltimore. It will undoubtedly affect us. I know. If only because our uncles won't fucking stop talking about it. Oh my god! It's gonna be the only. It's gonna be their entire part. They're all gonna be bridge experts now. Do you feel a little bit better though now that you know it was Indian dudes driving the boat? Yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I mean, at first when I was convinced, when I first opened my eyes this morning, I saw it and I became convinced that it was an Israeli uh, Ukraine mm-hmm. joint operation. That made me sad. Yeah. But then just seeing it was the horniest guys on the planet, and yeah. I think they're okay. Yeah. They survived. And I don't think that many people died off the bridge. They found two of them. A couple of them, I mean, God forbid it's any, <laughs> anyone we know. <laughs> that would be terrible. <laughs> but mathematically, I think the family of the survivors have no chance of ever seeing this, so who cares? Uh, I just, you know, I just hope Pop-Tarts don't get more expensive. That's what this feels like. Mm-hmm. This feels like Pop-Tarts are going to be more expensive as a, <laughs> as a whisper down the line. We lost a giant shipment? Uh, n- well, we lost every shipment because that's like a major uh, access port. Dude, and I, think, also, I don't know where we Im- import Pop Tarts from, but they're not gonna be able to get the boats in. That's also where all the heroin and fentanyl comes through. Oh it's the port God. of Baltimore. K and A might be oh, fucking no. crazy now. Damn, R.I.P. to my cousins. <laughs> but how about this though? What if it dumped all those Pop Tarts into the water and it made them somehow delicious? Wow, the Baltimore Pop Tart Party. Yeah. Mm. I mean, there is a certain smell of that harbor. <laughs> Oh, brother. We watched a homeless guy bathe in there when we were hanging out with Sam Talent. Yeah, there's a where it comes into the, um, you know, what's that, Baltimore Harbor? Mm-hmm. And it like they have a part where you can kind of just walk around and put your tootsies in. And a guy just started like taking his clothes off and like washing his fucking gangrenous limbs. And I went, eh, all right, well. And was giving out betting tips. He was like, always bet on black. And then he just started naming famous black boxers. <laughs> all right. Uh, yeah, makes sense, man. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Dude, I didn't I didn't know this was a homeless person bathing at the time, but when I was a kid, my aunt Pat took my she worked for the IRS. She took my sister and I to Baltimore with her for the week because that's where she had to work. And uh she just let my sister and I roam around the city during the day while she worked. And there was a fountain outside of uh the harbor shops there, and there was a guy in there just dipping dunking himself in the water. And my sister and I were like, oh sick, we can do this too. So we went in. <laughs> but in hindsight, it's like, yeah, it was clearly Ew. a homeless guy taking a bath. Dude. Whose fucking bath water we were clearly Ew. sharing. Dude, Damn. that was water that touched homeless guy butthole. I know, man. Ew. You guys were krill to him. Just <laughs> Oh, and he was probably getting juiced up by children yeah. being in his bath water. Yeah. Well, yeah. Was, that was a dream come true for him. Whoa. Yeah, he had a little bit of everything. It was me, my fat sister, and uh my little friend who was black. <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> like a Neapolitan of children. <laughs> yeah, he took one scoop across all three. <laughs> and went. Yeah, that's thanks. I love Baltimore. Dude, I wish you guys, I wish the cameras were rolling uh, 90 seconds earlier so you could have seen the interaction between Danny and Rob. He really is Diddy Dubs. <laughs> Clearly grooming him. He really is Diddy Dubs. It, it, it's, it's lights, camera, action, right? Uh, lots of stuff getting plugged in. 
lenses being rotated just so. And then right before we all sit down and get comfortable to start talking, um, Rob comes over and quietly goes to Danny. He goes, hey, man, can I get a uh, hit of that vape? <laughs> and Danny hands him a little, not even a weed vape, <laughs> a, a tobacco pellet. vape. Yeah. A toba- he gave him a little nip of tobacco vape. Mm-hmm. He needs a little and, and, Rob every stood there and, and Rob stood here and went... <sighs> Call the kettle it, black. And then he, handed it, he handed it back, and, and Danny goes, Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> and Rob scurried off. Dude, wagging my damn back tail, dude. Producer. Come on. <laughs> dude, we're in well, hour, hour 48 of <laughs> Rob's time with fucking Diddy over here. <laughs> you just wow. kicked the nicotine. I know. I, I tried it for two weeks. You can't even have a little bit of it. What made you want to try it? Um,. I just, I happened to smoke a blunt, and I went, ooh, that, that felt a little bit better than usual. Mm-hmm. And I said, it must be the nicotine. And I, I didn't actually take it straight. I didn't do any dips. I didn't do any vapes. I didn't do any cigarettes. But I was wrapping a lot of weed in blunt in tobacco. And then um, what I noticed, <clears throat> was, and I don't smoke that much weed. It's like once or twice a day, mm. a little bit, not getting, like, couch locked. But I liked it so much. Mm. I, I just thought I found the coolest thing ever. <laughs> And then I would go one day without it, and I would be so grumpy. I would be grumpy, like, squeezing my fists if, like, my my kids forgot to do something. Did you wear that sweater today because you anticipated smoking cigarettes? I'm a new man. No, I'm a, I'm a calmer, more relaxed. I'm a man of harmony now. Actually, you want to know the real the real story is I, I, I didn't get any sleep a couple nights ago, and then I had a temper tantrum, and I embarrassed myself in front of my wife, and so I wanted to really clean up my act and try to impress her. <laughs> so I, said, <laughs> I said, babe, how's my outfit? I'm going to go do the podcast. She said, you look great. Said, nice, I'm in the clear. How bad was your freak out? <laughs> uh, it was nothing, no, I, nothing like explosive. I was just acting like a baby. I was acting like a cranky baby mm-hmm. I get for it. probably an entire day, and I just felt so embarrassed about it. <laughs> I had to do something, so well, I... Pull the eject button. What was getting your goat? I just didn't sleep one night. Uh-oh. I had one night where I probably had too much caffeine during the day, and I did not sleep at all. I was like closing my eyes, and I would, I, I my heart would start pounding, and I just stayed up all night. I mean, I, I did that. You ever fall asleep at like five thirty, and then you get up at like eight? Yeah, you know, I, to, I, I might as well have not. And then all day, I was just like grumpy, and like. I, I was rubbing my temples. I had kind of a headache, and I was just rubbing my temples with my head in my hand. And Mary Jo kept going, like, are you, are you mad at me? Did I do something? <laughs> Why are you being such a fucking dickhead right now? Were you dragging your blanket around the house? <laughs> I might as well have been. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I might as well have been, dude. Damn, that coming off of the nicotine fits? Well, I know, man. I'm on a bad street. Yeah. I'm down bad. I'm down bad. I need to make it up. I know. When That's you... what I'm saying. I'm cleaning up my act. When you weren't smoking bloods, I would get the craziest phone calls about YouTube monetization. <laughs> like they're a- they're after me, dude. I'm shadow banned. I didn't know. Uh, no, 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 no. I'm not. A, I'm shadow banned. I take that back, dude. That's the worst thing a guy can be. <laughs> no, I the don't second say... you're like, I'm shadow banned. Make sure you like turn on notifications. No. It's over, <laughs> dude. It lasts five seconds though. Then you're like. Why don't we go disc golfing? <laughs> it's like no, you said why don't we go disc golfing, and now I'm realizing it's because I was acting like a huge yeah. faggot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do you ever think Punk's Tony Phil gets out of his hole and he's like, I'm shadow banned? Like I'm shadow banned? <laughs> yeah, okay. just oh, oh wow. <laughs> okay, look, you can even search for me. It's not even showing up. <laughs> the heck, man. Wow. Jeez, man. The aspersions have been cast. Yeah, Bo. <laughs> I know. But seriously, they are after me, and they're not helping me, and they demonetize everything I do. <laughs> yeah, they are. They are truly evil, man. We had we had like a barely in, in this week's episode, we had a barely visible video of Meatloaf singing, no audio, and Noah was singing "Paradise by the Dashboard Light," mm-hmm. and they said Un- unacceptable, and they and they demonetized and did all the all the warnings and stuff like that. Yeah, they fucking stink, man. They fucking hate me, dude. Go into my go into my <laughs> account, dude. It's nothing but red dollar signs all the way down. It's fucking. <laughs> I know I you're not and they and they monitor it. So if you bitch about it, I've been told that they retaliate if you bitch about YouTube. Oh, they're hearing this now. <laughs> yeah. Oh my no. god. Dude. No, we love YouTube. No, I bitched about it one time and uh someone I trust hit me up and said, Hey, by the way, they really hate when you bitch about them. <laughs> it's like, All right, well well how much worse they could can they do, man? Uh, delete my account and give me something to actually bitch about? I should be so lucky. Damn, dude. <laughs> let's actually let's get all right. Let's do it. Let's false flag it. Uh, what are you guys thinking about Diddy? I mean, th- this is who I look up to most, and uh, 
I've followed in his footsteps, and I'm not going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> when the playbook works, you run it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about, the, have you seen uh, people are calling it, this is the whole situation, they're calling it Black Epstein. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> I haven't seen that yet, but I do like that. It's it, Black Epstein, apparently. Oh, my God. Imagine, he imagine he how won't many... hang himself. No, 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 no. Diddy will never kill himself. He's supposed to be in Barbados or something right now. Cool. Dude, imagine, everyone needs a vacation. Imagine how many floaties you'd have to have on Black Epstein Island. <laughs> <laughs> imagine imagine thinking that you're flying to uh, an island to have sex with a child, and then you get there, and a black teenager wearing only a school bag knocks you out. <laughs> 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 and you go, oh, no, it's fucking Daytona all over again. <laughs> No. Do you think they did the OJ Chase thing? Because didn't he like take off in a private plane? His plane took off, but I don't think he was on it because I saw a video of him just chilling outside of Miami's airport. And that seemed to be after his plane had already taken off. He so, sent a decoy? I don't know. That it was essentially a decoy. Uh, one theory going around is that there might have been stuff on the plane that he did not want them to find. So he was flying his shit out of there rather than destroy it. I like, was like, I like that. He's like, I'm not, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not letting it go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, imagine still four <laughs> laptops getting flown <laughs> in a fucking private jet. He's doing making the band with child sex slaves. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shutting down the brothel. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, all right, look, I've been hard on you guys. Who wants to go to uh, the Caribbean? And they're all like, woo. So he sends them there. He's in Miami chilling, finally getting a quiet minute from all these teenagers bothering him every day. Oh, that'd be a fun trick to play on all the people that used to be fired up to go to Epstein Island and be like, look, we're bringing the band back together. And it's like, <laughs> oh, my bad. We didn't mention it was black Epstein Island. <laughs> oh, <my God. laughs> Dude. They would be like, uh, uh, like... A piranha tank. <laughs> if you drop a bunch of white white millionaires on Black Epstein yeah, Island, it'd be a feeding you. frenzy. <laughs> yeah, that would be like um, you could televise that knockout game. Oh my god! Man. <laughs> no, I hope I hope that's not what it is. I hope it's honestly just them trying to keep a a good brother down, and none of it's true. Mm -hmm. Gotta believe. That was a that was a big swing, almost like in an instant for me. I thought he was just doing gay stuff for like either favors or favorable treatment. I didn't know that there was sex trafficking, and now I don't know if it's funnier or sadder. Do you think mm. sex traffic is worse than regular traffic? Regular traffic's pretty bad, especially in Baltimore. I know, man. Do you think? Do you, I I would like to be the guy that now gets to explain to Meek Mill that like you know technically you were sexually trafficked. You're <laughs> you're in, you're no different than the shipping container full of uh, black teens that thought that they were going to be uh, SoundCloud rappers who are in the Caribbean yeah. now. You're the same as them. Yeah, Meek, you were not using the crosswalk in sex trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I saw this before, but it was recirculating yesterday, and it really made me laugh, and it really bummed me out that a man would let another man do this to him. But did you see the video of Meek? Letting Michael Rubin make him bunny hop on the tennis yeah. court May, might be the most embarrassed I've ever been for another man. Who, who's Michael Rubin? Uh, he used to own the Sixers, and now yeah. he's like a Fanatic? uh, fanatics guy. Yeah, yeah. The, makes all the shit sports apparel. Oh, oh, he's a merch guy. Yeah, damn, and he had he had me hop hopping up and down. Oh, group. yeah. Let me send this to the group chat. No, I, I, uh, I mean, do you think? Do you think every? The, the cooler your raps are, I think the more embarrassing stuff that you had to do, you know? Although I don't know how much it worse it gets than, than having to rap at a party. First of all, they're at a regular, the video of Meek rapping at the party and Diddy's yeah. like rubbing his shoulders and like <laughs> pulling him closer. First of all, there's nothing, I, I, I guarantee what happened was they were having a party and Diddy was like, why you spit one for us? And Meek's like, nah, dude, I'm kind of just trying to get fucked up and hopefully get a little bit of pussy. He's like, you're spitting one for us. And now Meek has to rap. He has to do karaoke to his own song over the whole party, and the whole time, Diddy's going, "Look at my, look at my object. Yeah, look at my boy here." Have you ever mm. felt compelled to do a version of that in comedy yet? <laughs> compelled? Yeah. To wait, like, wait, wait, wait. What side? To hop on the mic? No, I'm saying this. Like, <laughs> have you ever been in a situation where you felt like kind of like uh, the low man on the totem pole, and you were in the midst of people who you felt maybe inferior to at the time, where you're just like. Uh, maybe I need to like prove myself and do something for them if they ask me to do it. Ooh, okay. Yeah, was I ever meek? You know what I mean? 
and pressured. No, I think I would. I think I would embarrass myself and and do things that like made people never talk to me again. Yeah, you're geek mill. I'm geek mill. <laughs> <laughs> but I, could you see yourself on the other side of that? Could forcing you someone, Diddy forcing someone, someone to yeah. humiliate themselves while everyone else enjoys yeah. it? Absolutely not. That, <laughs> that's terrible. That might be like eighty percent of the shows that I go on. <laughs> <laughs> everyone, uh, yeah, I, I, I do think I could do that. Oh no, man. Not sexually, obviously. Just like, uh, you know. Forcing someone into silliness? Yeah. Stop oh, speak. that's playful. This The time Jewish billionaire Michael Rubin made Meek Mill do bunny hops for him. What? Because you got your ass beat in tennis. You got your ass beat. Keep going. Count out loud. This is the wrong time. Nigga. Count out loud. 30. Can't, huh? Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Seven, eight, nine, one, two, Keep going. Keep going. Don't cheat on your buddy hops. They suck. Your buddy hops suck. You got. Why are you doing that? Hurts, man. Yeah. I think Philadelphia is a city of losers. <laughs> <laughs> He's the best we got, man. That I th- sucks. I, I I think if uh, my greatest hope in life is probably to just be a fucking loser, dude. We come from a a poisoned landfill that just produces people like this. Do you think it's like a smear campaign? Because first they they killed Will, you know. I won't even like mention him has one of the Philly greats now, because they because they tore him down so bad. Yeah, and now they're after Meek. Kevin Hart's probably next. I think in this case, it's, it's an Oivea smear campaign. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is this is this is cultural assassination uh, perpetrated by, and I don't want to say Jewish people, but there's just too much overlap with the very rich. Well, uh, probably coincidental. <laughs> related to Cat Williams' theory, have either of you ever been put in a dress yet? No, no, no. But I think I'm in the position that I'm supposed to make someone wear a dress, right? I, like, oh, we're shooting this fun little content for Good Boy, you know? Yeah, yeah. Who you gonna I, do it to? You could pull it off because you're very unassuming, very <laughs> chill, very unassuming. People. Yeah, like, yeah. I want to be agreeable. Yeah, you've already kind of got Robin a, a bit of a dress. <laughs> <laughs> You got him coming over to take a sip out of your pocket. <laughs> Damn, he is the puff daddy. <laughs> I was really hoping it came back around for that. <laughs> Damn, Danny's a serial vapist. <laughs> you hate to see it. <laughs> Damn, PW. Mm. Brutal. So who would I want to put in a dress? Yeah. I mean, I think Noah's the funniest and most likely to do it. Yeah, we could get him bunny hopping around. Mm-hmm. But if I'm going after a challenge, it's got to be Naeem. Yeah. Yep. Now, I think you could do it, mainly because Naeem's open to anything silly. True. Well, I you think, slow boil him? Yep. <laughs> I think if you really pushed how silly the idea was, I think you could really get him to comply. Yeah. Yeah, it starts off with, like, I'll say a word, you repeat it back. Bo, bo, bop. Bop. And then in, in like 15 minutes, he's hopping around naked with a bath towel clenched between his butt cheeks. <laughs> he goes, isn't, this so, isn't this so silly and funny? And he's going, hey, yo, I don't know. You know, Danny, I don't know about this. And you're like, hop. Your hops stink. Clench. Please clench harder. Don't let that towel drop. I better not see one single fucking drip on that floor. <laughs> what do you think the number is for people like this where they'll subject themselves to this in exchange for... A certain way of living. I mean, I would do this exact video for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> it's also, <laughs> it's also a little confusing because all his first mixtapes were f- called Flamers. Yeah. So it's like, is he just like starting to? This is who he is. Then I'm okay with it. Like if he's in, if he's having a good time, mm-hmm. you know. And he's gonna. This is what he's into. Yeah. Mm. Then I'm like, all right. Then he's still winning in my book. I'm not even. I'm not mad at him. You're right. This this is a W. Yeah. He's winning. He does have the mechanics of a delicate man. So I don't think this is really out of his element. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping for. I mean, like that. He's just you know into the you know uh, submissive role. 
How good do you think the Jewish billionaire felt beating a black guy at something, too? Oh, my God. He's probably already got a load in his pants. And he hasn't even touched his property yet. <laughs> mm. I think about it in tennis when you don't have any points, it's considered love. So he's beating him Ooh, 40 love. Love, love. Another man loves you <laughs> in public, in man. the sun. Man, we got to we gotta seriously get him committed or something. Good luck, brother. <laughs> okay, Miki, you're not allowed to do any more gay shit. Please, dude. Or just go the complete opposite direction because to me there's nothing scarier than a real gangster gay guy. Yes, like Omar from The Wire yeah. was one of the most terrifying characters exactly. in movie history. So if he goes fully into that? Yes. If he came Black Elton John? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm all in. That would be cool. Well, isn't, wasn't it, what's it, Lil Nas X? Is that not him? Nah, because he's not like gangster. But can you be? Can you be that gay and be gangster? I think your best shot is being Lil Nas X. I think your best shot is being like, yeah, that's right. I get fucked in my ass. And people go, all right, man, chill. Mm -hmm. And you go, no one can handle how real I am about getting fucked in my ass. <laughs> you can't also just be like, I am I run everything. I'm the best. I but, think he, we haven't seen it yet. But the door's open. The, yeah. He there, could be the chosen one. There's a tight butthole shaped gap in the market. <laughs> and think we need one there, of these guys to fill Think it. about if there was like a heavyweight UFC champion that was flamingly gay. And he was a ground and pound guy. Mm. Ooh, and he's, what, and he's kissing them and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not Wouldn't illegal. Wouldn't that be terrified? Imagine being held down and kissed by a big, and let's call it, let's say it's a Russian guy. We could use a Russian heavyweight. We haven't had, I mean, these uh, these black guys are really running amok right now. It'd be cool for, because <laughs> it, it, it would never be a way. Our best shot is Stipe, and he's, he's, not, he's a fucking Eastern European, isn't he? Yeah. Anyway, we need a fucking overweight Russian guy to dominate the heavyweight division and just kiss all these guys. Well, dude, there is a video of Cyril gone with a clear erection as Nganu's on top of him. And, and uh, you see it wiggling, and Nganu appears to punch it as he's doing <laughs> knee on belly. Nah. Dude, well, he's way. French. He's French, so. True. Yeah, it could just be a uh, sign of respect. Damn. And he can't, you can't be You can't be the boss. You can't be. You can't thug. You can't thug if you chug. You know what I mean? Come. I, I think I think you can. I think you remember knock if you buck, thug if you chug. <laughs> Man, that should go crazy. At what is. <laughs> yeah, thug, thug if you chug. I think might be it. That might be the move. Twenty twenty four summer. It's starting now. It's spring break right now. It's thug if you chug. All you fucking skinny dreads, black guys, no shirt, still wearing a school bag at spring break right now, knocking out white dudes. Time to time to thug if you chug. Time to start fucking guzzling. Did you watch the Freaknik documentary? Mm -mm. Uh, what is it on? Hulu. No. Oh man, that's great. There's certain people that should not watch it though. What it, I don't know what it is. It's like a a black meetup, like the. The biggest like black meetup spring break kind of thing. It was like incessant sexual assaults. Yeah, and people would be like twerking on top of like fucking Honda Civics. Yeah, and just getting their pussy lips pulled apart. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Great watch. <laughs> but like, are we talking about like um, like actual sexual assaults or like just black nightclub behavior? Kind of tough to tell. Okay. Right. I'd say a healthy mix of both. To the alike. 2024 eye, it's clear sexual assault. Yeah, but back yeah. then, they're like, man, hey, just grabbing a little titty ain't nothing. Mm. Damn. They do be doing that, though. They still do that. By the way, that's still legal in street fighting. In street fights, if a titty comes out, the guy filming can grab it real quick. Oh, oh no. I hate it. I think that's a rule <laughs> they need to change. They need to make it illegal. I, I think it's up to somebody filming to stop the fight then, because I think a titty out in a lady fight is a lady knockout. No way. No. The fight's just getting started. Bro, nobody has ever come back from a titty coming out in a fight. What are you talking about? We're, fucking JD and JD. <laughs> yeah, Do you JB know about JD fight fighters yet? <laughs> Is that the uh, light-skinned girl? Yeah. yeah. I think mixed-race twins. All right. Well, she might be the anomaly. Her fights don't even start till her tits are out. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, she's getting her ass beat the whole no, time. Uh, YouTube uh, will take us take down if we show it. <laughs> yeah, YouTube hates us. Yo, what the fuck is that moving in Cyril Gon's shorts? But they took the video down. Well, oh, that bummer. Let's assume it was just his wiener going crazy. His wiener going sandworm mode. Man, I don't know if there's anything <laughs> more attractive than a lady who likes fighting. Not only fighting, but she gets her ass beat sometimes, and she's cool with it. 
Oh, dude, my wife started training. Ah, uh, uh, very been cool. Great. Yeah. yeah, it is the best. She trying shit out on you yet? Oh, constantly. Mm -hmm. And I like a little bit of danger, mm -hmm. you know. Before, you could just like manhandle, and now she has like moves to escape guard. Yeah. So I have to sometimes pick her up and let her know, like, yeah, you can do mm -hmm. all the cool training shit, but I could just. Yeah. We'll get her there. She's training at hearts. Oh, we're, gonna, cool. we're gonna get her good yeah. enough to kill you. She is like a we're gonna, we're gonna use her to save Rob's life. Yeah, what if she became <laughs> your diddy? <laughs> She's gonna be the uh CIA or whatever, the FBI doing the federal doing the raid, the no knock raid and beating your ass in the middle of the night. <laughs> yeah, you can use her vape, but you gotta suck it out of her pocket. <laughs> Dude, she is a little spider monkey though. Like before I could just like pick her up, but now she's already taking the back and like moving mm -hmm. around. Ladies, you hear that? Cool to hear. You want to beat up your violent boyfriend? <laughs> Come train with us. And I got to be like, well, why don't we do Muay Thai? And what could you do then? Now, is this that is your game. Has that inspired you to train more? You stepping it up? Are you like Jennifer Lopez in enough? I now? don't know because I. <laughs> <laughs> Are you wearing a black sports bra and just beating the fuck out of a heavy bag with thoughts of your wife almost choking you? <laughs> I don't. So I don't know what. Like, I kind of want to start training just so she can't, but I do like the danger, yeah. you know? Yeah. I like a little tiny bitch that's kind of scary. Yeah. Yeah, and you do, and <clears throat> I don't know how you guys feel about that. You, I'm, I'm assuming we all feel the same way, but you, if you ever get into an argument with someone, you want your girl to be as ignorant and aggressive as yes. possible. See, that was already happening. So I know, like, but yeah, now she's not going to get fucking swiped away yeah. like a plastic bag in the wind mm -hmm. now she can attach herself to someone i think it's gonna get worse dude. <laughs> <laughs> like, she, she was already pretty you know <laughs> she's gonna escalate it to the yeah. point where now she gets like stabbed i think no matter what like, yeah it's so hot <laughs> she's built up to like i can't believe like the amount of times i'm like you should have gotten knocked out for saying that that's a crazy mm. thing to say yeah yeah i like that i think yeah. that's cool you know, that would be a, a good idea because um, I've often considered having like a an automated knockout glove at home for disrespectful shit. My wife says <laughs> it, it just flies in like a Roomba <laughs> because I can't do it. <laughs> it's just a, it's a um, boxing glove on that like yeah. extended corners, the extending key holder <laughs> lattice. <laughs> huh. Yeah, that'd be cool as hell. You just put her in standby. <laughs> Now, do you think with her, like, becoming more dangerous, like, would you be almost more attracted if she took on more of a persona, like, like fucking Dalton from Roadhouse, where she's, like, politely <laughs> yeah. telling people to go away because you know what's about to happen? Yeah, I mean, she walked around, specifically when we were in L.A. and she knew how soft everyone was, yeah. she walked around like Dalton from Roadhouse. Boss like, bitch. it was fucking insane. Yeah. And then, but, like, her move for a while was almost start a fight with a dude and, like, make me go fight a dude no she, she like really that. liked doing that did she want you to get your ass beat did she want it to be rough did she want you to like ko this guy with a spin kick what was she looking for from it i don't know because she's she's never seen me get my ass beat or win mm, just like you know you're going at it for a long time and then you're huffing and puffing yeah and, yeah you're lucky dude <laughs> what like the closest she's ever seen t for like a w for me was a uh, dude slipped and I'm still like standing above him and I'm just like uh, gorilla bunching. Donkey Kong. Yeah. And then uh, a bouncer him. just so easily throws me over his shoulder and takes me out. <laughs> were you kidding? Me? Were you <laughs> flailing wildly while he carried you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that was the closest W she's ever seen. Yeah, I think I think what those women are actually looking for when they instigate for their boyfriend is they go. Shut up! You're fucking like, I guess sports. It happens a lot of professional sports. Yeah, and it's just like, shut the fuck up! You're a fucking pussy. And then like, he says something too aggressive, and you have to step in. Mm -hmm. And then he he gets in your face. He's like, you need to fucking you know check your bitch, obviously. And then you go, whoa, whoa, whoa don't call her a bitch. And then he goes, are you gonna do something about it? And you go, I don't want to, but yeah, I'm going to. Yeah. And then you get that tummy ache, that instant tummy ache, and then your hands feel weak, and then you have to swing. <laughs> And then it gets ugly, and then she jumps back in and goes, fucking stop. And she starts doing that punch on the side of his head, and he's not even noticing her. <laughs> Throws her away. Now you're overreacting. You're actually losing. You can't do anything about it. 
you both go home just like bloody lip, embarrassed. Oh man, imagine that's that what ride they're, home. they're looking for. <laughs> what do you think you would break the ice with on the ride home if that if that happened at a sporting event? Uh, I I fucking you see, I did get him with a couple. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I did. I, I called him a couple times. I don't know if you saw. Shut I think fuck. I would start trying to act like it didn't happen. <laughs> I'd be like. The Eagles won, though. That was, you know, they didn't think we were going to. And like, yeah, I think McNabb's we're gonna to... have a good year. McNabb hasn't played in 15 yeah. fucking years. I agree. We should have left at halftime, but I'm glad we stuck. We got to see the W. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you think you could ever go body and Clyde? We're just like, babe, the whole world hates us. It's just you and me, mm-hmm. and you have sex in the Uber. That's the dream. Yeah. That's yeah. The... You could. I that wigger is always within you. Mm-hmm. She's really been trying to bring out my wigger, dude. Like, I'm wearing Vans today, but she's bought me three or four pair of Jordans over the past three months. Oh, man. Today, she was like, you're going on the cast today? Put on the chains. Put on the chains. (laughs) (laughs) What the hell? I lost it. Damn. Wow, yeah, Mama mama likes her boys wigged. Yeah, Yeah, new Jordans are like a a wigger stick and box trap. (laughs) (laughs) I want to take a second to uh, thank our sponsors. Tim, look at the both of us in our special shirts, man. Our, w- what precious boys we are. And these are both, this is a true classic t-shirt, t-shirt and that's a true classic sweater. You see that? Look at this. You see that? Look at this. Biceps built into the fucking sweater. I didn't even want to, but I cheated on my wife on the way here because of this true classic t-shirt. <laughs> Fellas, it's time to look better in your clothes. Dressing well doesn't have to be hard. Just make the switch to true classic. All their shirts are made to accentuate the places the eye goes to first. My eyes are up here, boys. Tighter in the arms and chest, but with the perfect amount of room in your midsection. The best part is that True Classic sells their premium products in packs to help you save. Get started with a two or three pack of t-shirts today and feel the difference for yourself. Check out True Classic's activewear, workwear, and casual wear to look and feel your best no matter what's on the schedule. I've been wearing True Classic now for close to two years, Tim. Look at you. Dude, I walked in. As soon as I saw Tim, I said, you look like an Indian ship captain. And I said, yes, certainly. <laughs> <laughs> look at me. But look at these fucking things, man. You know? I'd say the biggest endorsement was when Jake was on. Dude, he looked great in the True Classic Yeah, t-shirt. that was wild. Yes. Oh, wasn't that also, like, several sizes too small? Yeah. Dude, every, it, just, it worked. Literally every <laughs> other shirt that I've seen Jake Matera in, he looks like he bought it at Build-A-Bear. <laughs> <laughs> but True Classic is the only exception. I swear to God, these t-shirts, not only did they look great... <laughs> They feel fucking incredible on. Super fucking soft. <laughs> Dude, I have a thousand t-shirts in my fucking drawer. As soon as my wash is done and it's put in there, I'm digging through just to dig out my True Classics, baby. <laughs> I don't even want to wear any fucking t-shirt anymore. I'm only wearing True Classics. So if you're ready to upgrade your closet, shop now with my exclusive link at trueclassic.com slash fatbird and save up to 25% off your first order. Please support our show and tell them we sent you. No matter how you move, make 2024 your most comfortable year yet with True Classic. Chicho Mexicano in the chat said, I got true classic pants. Makes my dick print huge. Whoa. I haven't got the pants yet, and I can't wait to fucking try. Dude, they got so much fucking Don't stuff let me. on their website. Don't let me get the true classic pants. <laughs> but I also want to thank uh, Manscaped. While you're spring cleaning your apartment, spring clean your balls while you're at it. Manscaped does everything you need to clear out that winter bush with the Lawnmower 5.0 Ultra. It's a trimmer that has tons of amazing features. Hate leaving a mess? The lawnmower is waterproof, so you can shave in the shower and keep things contained. Maybe you like the shower in the dark. You do you. Dual LED spotlights are there to help you see what you're up to. Dude, if you use a fucking Manscaped fucking lawnmower 5.0 in the shower, you could look for a missing child with this fucking thing, let alone shave your fucking ball. <laughs> Dude, it's great. I think it's like a million candle power. Don't, don't point it at a police helicopter. That's what I'll tell you. Or if you do, all your friends need to run. Yeah, cops hate when you point a pubed up fucking shaver yeah, at them. Not until I got this did I ever even attempt to trim up the gooch area. Oh, you would never. I, I never even thought about it as a possibility. Now I, do. I, now I, I don't even look. Dude, I've been having so much fun manscaping that I'm like, let me see what else. <laughs> Don't say manscaping. <laughs> Dude, I start shaving at my chest, end up down my balls, and even say, fuck it, I'm going even further and end up at my neck. <laughs> All thanks to Manscaped. If you're on the go a lot, you're in luck. The lawnmower 5.0 even comes with a compact case that's perfect for travel. Get 20 for, 20% off and free shipping with the code FATBIRD at manscaped.com. That's 20% off and free shipping with the code FATBIRD at manscaped.com. Nothing like a little spring cleaning in your pants. I feel like uh, I feel like Mike's body hair currently looks like a map of Washington, D.C. for some reason. Do you want to see? Please. All right, so I haven't shaved my body in a while, but it's coming because I'm starting to heat. We are renegotiating the contract. <sighs> 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 
What an atomic bomb of a thumbnail. <laughs> thumbnail <laughs> you've just given us. Um, I saw a story that every time monetize I monetize this, dude. <laughs> bro, every time I see a fucking chimpanzee losing his mind, I think of you comparing me to one. And there's uh there's chimps going wild in Germany right now. They're at a zoo where they're not happy with their living arrangements, so they're ripping fucking each Merkel. other's hair out. Oh, uh, so, they're turning on each other? Well, in protest. And it's uh it's fun to see. I hate seeing animals in that condition. However, at the same time, it is a very funny form of protest because some of them are just full on bald and other ones look like this. Yeah, well, me and Mary Jo hate monkeys, so... Oh, my God. I'm going to show her that later. You. I'm going to show her. <laughs> All right, well... She doesn't like a single monkey. You don't like monkeys either? I'm indifferent on... I was on indifferent on them before, and now every time one shows up on, like, a video or a, a TV show, it makes my wife furious. So I go, get that fucking monkey off the screen! <laughs> was there ever an issue? Um, She just doesn't trust them and thinks that they're disgusting and... <laughs> <laughs> And she really didn't like when they started pulling ladies' titties out at like shrines in China and stuff. Uh, that re I think that really sent her over the edge. Yeah, um, a monkeys in Asia do act a lot like Indian men. <laughs> Did you see that one study? <laughs> There's no science to back this up. That's crazy. That's crazy. It's like it's the same. Have you seen the videos of them at like the beach and there's like a lady sunbathing? And wait, that might have been Asian guys. And they come up and they're just like putting their arm around her while people take like take they're taking photos with ladies at the beach because they're just like check it out, a hot lady. I might be confusing this with the Freaknik documentary, Danny. Can you clarify that? <laughs> oh yeah. Can we go? I'm sorry. Can we go back to the Freaknik documentary? I want to hear more about it. Wait. Before we get to that, I just want to thank Kush Life. Oh, we also want to thank our sponsor, <laughs> Kush Life. Kush Life is the highest quality THC you can buy right now, and they'll deliver it directly to your doorstep. THCA is fully legal in over 45 states and has the same psychoactive effects as THC when heated. So just about any way you consume it. Kush Life doesn't sell that Delta 8 bull honky or that Delta 9 junk either. Only the highest quality premium THCA cannabis. They have a great selection too. All the strains you know, Gelato, Runtz, Gary Payton, and more. The guys at Kush Life are working on a very special strain for everyone here at Good Boy. And you guys out there, so stay tuned for special lines of bud. All along with traditional buds, check out their prices on Moon Rocks and ask them about Kush Soda, which is set to release this spring too. A nice treat. So support all the shows here and check out kushlifestore.com. Use promo code DADMEAT for 15% off your order with fast and discreet shipping. Try CushLifeStore.com once, and you'll never go further than your mailbox for great cannabis again. That's the Cush Life Store guarantee. Wow, you did it. Yeah, man. We did it. The hard part's mm -hmm. over. I do want to hear about this now. <laughs> oh, Rob, can you pull up the trailer for the Freaknik documentary? So they... I'm only halfway through, but they're trying to sell it as, like, this is an important event celebrating black culture but then it takes a horrible turn instantly uh there we go wait no hold on this is a reaction i think go back and add trailer to the search please oh wait there it is it's the third video yeah baby here we go kill it generation has a moment where they come just to have some fun Atlanta is the mecca for black people in America. It has multiple historically black colleges. In the 80s, we said, let's plan a picnic during spring break. Let's call it Freaknik. Freaknik was the greatest black gathering in America. It was like an entry point into the black cultural experience. To be able to be in the middle of the street, dancing, laughing, playing your music, it's a moment. <laughs> How is that different from seriously any day? In my old neighborhood. They no social media, barely had internet. Doing Freaknik, stars start coming in. You would see Tupac, Goody Mob, Outkast, Usher Raymond. I don't know what heaven looks like, but this seems like a version of it. You was lit, okay? The legacy of Freaknik is black joy, black self-determination. Black love, black excellence, black enterprise. But the legacy of Freaknik is also the ugly side. <laughs> it started to get a lot more out of control. People were coming by the masses. What the hell just happened? If you tried to bring back Freaknik, 
bro. It wouldn't be what it was. <laughs> Buddy. <laughs> the streets, the people, the debauchery. Who made this? The Blaze? <laughs> <laughs> no inclination to the death that we were creating. Them kids ain't know nothing about freak me. <laughs> Trust me, your mom and daddy got that. <laughs> Whoa. Thank you for bringing this to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll be a real treat. I didn't even know about this. I had no idea. What? Was this something that everybody knew about and I'm not cool? What, Freaknik itself? Yeah, or is that you? I mean, I don't know. Is this Danny stuff, or is this everyone and I'm lame? I think it's everyone, Did but it might be Freaknik? me. Yeah, um, when I used to be that big, also in, makes sense, big into BET in the 90s, mm -hmm. and I think they would do, it was either live streams or they would just like uh, speak about it. Yeah, it, it was, they were trying to compete with the MTV Spring, spring Break. break yeah. So during the same time, you could turn on BET. Like, it, it's pretty much where you an ass or tits, man. What, nice. Uh, here's So, was that stuff, was that spring break stuff, was that for, like, younger teens to beat off to? Or was that for very lonely people who couldn't even imagine going to spring break? Or was it for people who were into spring break culture and just like, let me just, let me just, I'm just, I'm into this stuff, you know? Who the fuck is in the spring break culture? If you're not. the people that the people that are actually at spring break, fucking grinding on the beach and stuff, oh, was it for them to watch or no, no, no? I, I no. think, I think maybe initially it was designed for historically black colleges, universities to mark this as a uh, a gathering date, and it was like for them. And then because it was in Atlanta, there were so many other people that came from from. Is this getting you choked up? <laughs> I am. I get a little emotional when I talk about ladies having their pussy I mean, lips pulled yeah. apart. I'll give it to you. This is a beautiful story. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm being moved that deeply. But, um... <laughs> I mean, speak on this. I, I, speak on Freaknik, brother. <laughs> Thug if you chug. <laughs> I get a little emotional when I see a lady with a Chucky-sized butt. <laughs> Smashing on the hood of a Toyota Corolla. But I think it was it was designed for students <laughs> from historically black colleges and mm -hmm. universities to gather there. And because they had it in Atlanta, which has a high black population, people that just didn't go to college were like, fuck it, we'll come too. Ooh. Then at that point, hey, um, that when happened. famous people started getting involved, it became this mess. It was like black Woodstock. Yeah. So what inspired it was the MTV Spring Break and how white it was. Right. So, uh, so they were like, we're going to do our own thing. That, all right. So that tracks. I like that. But... I the the central question here, or the the question that remains unanswered for me, is what was the spring break content made for? Who who what viewer was the spring break break content made for? Was specifically that for, for me the jerk off? That's what I'm saying. Was that for me at 13 years old to go? Well, I was terrified of the future because I was like, I'm gonna have to maintain a jacked body and learn how to dance when I get older. I want to kill myself, but I will real quick beat off and then go to bed. Oh, did it bum you out? I was terrified. I was terrified that that was what was coming. I thought all adults were supposed to be into that. And, and then I and then I made friends my age, and I found out that everyone thought it was gay. But for a minute, I was I was very confused about the world and terrified. Oh, I I wanted to be there so bad. You Dude. are wearing Spuds McKenzie's sweater right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like especially when uh, Limp Bizkit did the performance where they blew off the boat. Oh my god. <sighs> I wanted to be there so fucking bad. I definitely, like, I I started saving money to go to spring break at, like, 13. <laughs> Dude, do you think there's any chance that Limp Biscuit was responsible for the Baltimore boat? Wow. <sighs> Maybe that was the official kickoff to spring break because a lot of schools are taking an early spring break right now. Wow, they, yeah, it they is finally found some time. stuff to break. Yeah, you know. Let's come get it. About your fucking bridge. <laughs> The bridges keep tolling, 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 tolling. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, I know y'all been loving this bridge right here. <laughs> Francis Scott Key. Um, you never had a desire to go down to a spring break and, and party and, and give girls UTIs? I was so repulsed and terrified by it. Yeah. Dog. Bro, Dan. I don't know. Dan, what about you? You got Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's all I ever wanted yes. to do. 
I, I, and I appreciate that. And I wish, I wish I had a desire, to, you know, but it just wasn't who I was. I was terrified. What if you had the opportunity now? I had the same emotional and like biochemical reaction to seeing spring break stuff as I did to imagining being in like the protective suit while they train police dogs. Oh my God. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I thought the same thing where I was like, I could do that mm -hmm. if I was forced to, but it would really be stressful. I had the opposite, man. I just, I thought everybody there was the coolest person on earth. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was a total outsider because I was not as cool as them and yeah. I just wanted to be. Did that. you ever imagine yourself going down? Yeah, but in my mind, it was so, even in, even in my wildest dreams, it was so hard to believe that I could be in that situation. Mm hmm. Would you make you? I mean, you'd probably. I could see you trying to make friends with a bunch of dudes mm -hmm. and it going really <laughs> poorly. <laughs> they're all like, they're in seriously like the red. They're, they're the needles in the red for them to get pussy. And you're like, hey, fellas. Well, <laughs> you, wanna, you guys want to see me drink 14 beers and piss myself? Tim, it's funny you mention that. The very first time I had like a bro like interaction out in a uh, party setting, that uh, that kind of happened. To me. Right. Yeah. Um, I so, could have guessed that. What happened? Yeah. I went to WDRE Fest in Camden, New Jersey, and it was WDRE. It was like kind of like a hard rock. It was like ninety four WYSP adjacent. Okay. Okay. So the headliners for the event were Rage Against the Machine. Before that, it was Filter. They sang "Hey Man, Nice Shot." Right. That's yeah. when that just came out. Uh, no Doubt was there, so it was a lot of like alternative -ish mu music. And it was a week before my high school graduation in uh, early June ninety six, and my buddy Danny and I went down. And uh, it was my first time hanging out with, like, older people. Like, before that, it was just us hanging out in his house. And we had beer, and we were walking around. We came across this uh, car full of dudes that were just hanging out back of their car. And we are just like, hey, what's up, guys? And the one guy's like, you guys partying? I was like, yeah, dude, we're partying. You partying? <laughs> They're like, yeah. I didn't know that partying meant that you have Coke. <laughs> and so we hung out with them and, uh, like, yeah, if you guys want to chill with us, you can. So we walked around the parking lot, did laps around this parking lot for, like, an hour. And the guy's like, are you guys partying or what? I was like, yeah, man, that's what we're doing right now. <laughs> and he turned to my buddy Danny and he's like, listen, man, you're cool. He's a fucking dork. <laughs> and they just left us alone. So I was like, all right, well. I just wasted everybody's time. Until so I had no idea that I did that until somebody informed me later what that meant. Danny, come on. He wants to go for a walk with us. <laughs> I knew we were going to be cool. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that would have been my spring break experience. <laughs> Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. And 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 every single word that just came out of your mouth is within perfect harmony of my image of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the idea of even talking to girls was so far out of the equation that I wouldn't even considered it. Yeah. But I was yeah. like, all right, I'm, I'm going to make a male friend here today. <laughs> But, but I can also relate to it. I think I think knowing that that's what I was going to do is what kept me from doing mm. things. <laughs> no, I firmly believed I was going to go there and be the fucking man. Yeah, I started. Yeah, dude, I put sun in in my hair. I uh, went tanning. I forgot you used to be a dedicated hot boy. Yeah, you yeah. Were, he 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 lived it every day. Yeah, you do have a riff raffy vibe. Mm hmm. So I could picture yeah. you being like a party scene. Guy. He was getting cool haircuts. Cool haircuts. He was dressing cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, tattoos used to be cool. Yeah, yeah. They really fucked that up for me. I know. But he was, dude, every, every day in, day out. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I was a hot boy for a little bit. Well, I had a natural six-pack that I didn't ever have to work for, so oh, I was wow. confident with my shirt off. Yeah, it's like wow. having rich parents. And that, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was the top move. Yeah. I couldn't even really skateboard that good, but I would just fucking oh. push around, shirt off. Oh, my God. Dude. <laughs> you were you're doing BAM LARPing. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so then that makes more sense for your, your way as well. I think... Are there any other personality types, or are those the three? <laughs> have we have we completely there, mapped there, the male experience? There's, I think, a lot of in between. Wait, did uh, you ever did you ever prove it though? Did you ever go to something like that and like really put yourself to the test, or were you fine just being like number one hot boy and you know on the, the block you grew up on? Um. Well, I got into a relationship early on. I've been with my wife since twenty one. Oh, good idea. So. She really ruined a lot of cool shit. So you never actually got a on. chance to put it to the test. You did it. You ruled the uh, roost you know, in your grade school. A little bit 
in Wildwood, you know, right after high school. Uh, but then I started flying for free. Now, okay, mm-hmm. now Wildwood doesn't count. That's a Wildwood doesn't count as um, spring break culture because everyone in Wildwood looks like they grew up near a toxic waste dump site. Brother, I found this out the hard way. <laughs> kind of the man in Wildwood. <laughs> yeah, Wildwood is like spring broke. <laughs> I, I started flying for free. So I could go to more exotic locations. No. And yeah, you, made, you made it to Tulum and they almost turned you away at customs. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry? No, you're a fucking retard. Get yeah. away. Yeah, I went to Daytona Beach, oh, Miami oh Beach, my God. San Diego, LA. Yeah, I mean, in I Wildwood, could... you could fucking sell your meat on the boardwalk. Yeah, I found out I was a real freak outside of the tri state area. <laughs> How perfect. <laughs> what would a normal weekend look like for you in Wildwood? Uh, my so my buddy had a house there. Uh, so we the first uh year like senior year started in spring break all the way that summer. We would go there every weekend. Uh, try to pick up chicks. Uh, one of us would be successful the other two wouldn't be successful it would cause all kinds of chaos and fist fights um was it now this was just it was just because the dudes were being pushed to their limits by no pussy by tfw no gf yeah the weekend. yeah they so were a lot freaking out and punching up the house <laughs> <laughs> there was a mass haymaker <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was pure chaos all the time uh and then uh, one of my buddies got a job down there. Now he was our inside man. Once we had the inside man, we were good. So we got, he got the... a job down there. So he needed to live down there. Mm-hmm. So you guys could crash. Yep. What what kind of it was? Was it just him staying there alone, and you guys came no, down to crash? No, dude. Or was this down was there like family? a borderline frat house. It was like everyone went in on like a four bedroom that twelve people lived in. Now this was the Catholic school fantasy. Yeah, living near Wildwood. Mm-hmm. We agree. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. This you you got to part time the Catholic school fantasy in Wildwood, New Jersey. Yeah. And it's just. It's probably 24 hours a day, as many dudes as can fit in there scheming for pussy. Yeah, so I, I took the early route. What I would do was skateboard down the boardwalk shirtless again. Uh, early bird gets the worm, yeah. obviously. <laughs> uh, well, I was on reconnaissance, you know? Like, I'm going to check out the different... You, they, they sent you in like a drone. Yeah, yeah. To map out, plot out the targets. Yeah, so I, I'd say what area of the boardwalk we were hanging out But then in. that means they also have to trust you to not just scoop it all up for yourself and come home and be like, I, I don't know what's going on. It's a dangerous game, Have man. you ever known me as a selfish person? Uh, that's what I'm saying. They had to make this value yeah, judgment yeah, on yeah. yeah, I would never do that. No, of course not. I would never do that. So it never occurred to you that like you're like, all right, I could be a double agent. It started to. Once I realized that the type of girls I would have to talk to in order to get my friends laid mm-hmm. were a little bit beneath me. Oh, no. Then I started to be a little bit of a You betrayed a the boys. <laughs> right. Wow. Danny, yeah. pre- pretend I'm a girl that looks like me, and you see me getting a frosty treat on the boardwalk, and you know that I would be a perfect pussy companion for one of your friends. Was this <laughs> Was this in the morning or at night? So... Like, do you have to do you have to get the invitation out to the girls in the morning so that they could plan to be there that night, or were you just like, that's I think a, that's a smart move, looking that, at girls eating funnel cake? Like, do you guys want to come back to my place? Because we're, like a seagull. That's, <laughs> a, that's exactly the move. So you go around during the day, you're scouting. You'd be like, oh, my friends have a a place at blah blah blah. If Mike's, um, you're, you're trying to tell Mike, you're trying to invite Mike back with his uh, hose later that night. Okay. Hey, what, what do you want though? <laughs> I'd be shirt off and I'd go like this. And then I would, yeah, yeah. <laughs> What's up? And then they'd laugh at me because that's ridiculous. And I'd be like, ah, I'm just fucking with you. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, what no. are you guys up to? Do you live around here or are you hanging out? Nah, I'm actually from Delco, but I'm waiting for my Airbrush Sugar Ray t shirt to be finished. But what are you up to? <laughs> are you going to be here tonight? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to be here all summer. Dude, uh, my buddy Tommy. Got a hold of two kegs. We got a bunch of people coming over tonight. You should stop by. Uh, do you guys happen to have any antibiotics? (laughs) (laughs) 
Uh, <laughs> Tommy had clap a few weeks ago. We so get some. Like... <laughs> I, I've had clap. We antibiotics, guy. <laughs> I've had clap so often that the people in my high school said I have a pause. <laughs> Standing ovation. <laughs> That's the best joke I've ever heard. <laughs> you would have got me to come back to your house, Dan. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, but our, I would then, I would then say that we had a pool, which we didn't have a pool. Oh, but our neighbor, you devil. But our neighbor in the back had the pool, and our house. We would be like, they'd be like, instantly be like, you don't have a pool. And then my buddy Tommy would jump off the roof into the neighbor's pool. And he would be like, there's a pool if you want to be in a pool. That's a pussy fatality. Yeah. <laughs> he was also uh, one of the larger ones. So it was more of a fun, like, he would get the yeah. attention, but we weren't really scared that he was going to get any pussy. He was a fat guy? Chubby. Chubby. Not, not cut. No, wasn't cut. Yeah. yeah. That's the perfect move, because you know no girl's going to jump off the roof into a pool. However, you didn't technically lie. So they're still on board with what you're doing yep. at this point. Yep. Still a trustworthy man. Yeah, by the skin of your teeth. You really, you really bend it, don't you? Also, I would never jump off the roof into the pool. It was so scary. That was below, that was below your pay grade. That's the grunts. Was it an above ground pool? No, no, it was an in ground pool. Yeah, dude, my dad. By the way, before before we had it, I have to, I don't know what to do with this. This is the funniest visual ever, and it's real. My dad's getting an in ground pool put in in Northeast Philly. Sick. Sick, but it's yeah. like a northeast Philly yard. They're having an in-ground pool put in. It's wait ridiculous. Did he get rid of his old one? Yeah. All right. Yeah, they pulled out the old one. They're going in-ground, dude. Your dad's the coolest man. He's it's it's and I and I said, Dad, this is crazy. And he's like, I know. I just want to do it really bad. Yeah. It's like, wow, man, you sound exactly like me, dude. Tim's dad's like house is the coolest. He's got an above-ground pool. He's got a basement full of guitars, and the guy's always got a beer in his hand. He made a bar. Yeah. Yeah, he's I mean, he's the ultimate dude. Correct me if I'm wrong. I may just be imagining this, but is his name behind the bar? No, BB's name's behind the bar. Okay. His name's right, on yeah. the, the right. out the outdoor area. That's a cool dude. That's move. his spot. Get your babe's name on the bar. There's so, a mini bar outside. I he, and it's all crammed into a northeast Philly, you know, twin. Yes, coolest guy ever. It's the kind of house where like you want to get a sunburn and take a nap in the air conditioning. Oh my oh, god. Yes. We're weeks. Just shirt off on the couch, just... We're weeks away. Pain and pleasure. The we're, best of both worlds. We're weeks away from fucking Poppy's pool, man. Well, no, because they, they just started building it. The contractors just started pouring it or, or like, digging out. White guys? I don't know. I haven't seen them yet. All right. I haven't seen them yet, but it's been a whole thing. They've needed, like, engineers and stuff. Oh, my God. It's not... They're... <laughs> It's it's the kind of thing that's not supposed to happen, mm -hmm. and so they had to do a lot of consulting. It's such a small backyard that uh, get but, an engineer. But now that there's not a twelve foot across above ground pool or twenty four foot across above ground pool or whatever it was, yeah. it looks enormous. But now it, the whole thing it's basically a moat. It was the biggest <laughs> above ground pool I've ever seen. <laughs> uh, Tim, when they got rid of it, did you have a special ceremony for it? No, I didn't even know about it. I went and I just saw the fucking uh, sand pile that was tough. under it. And, uh, I, you know, I, I can't wait. This is going to be the best summer of my whole life. Have you seen the <laughs> schematics for the new one? I looked at it, and I always, whenever, there's been times in my life where I had a chance to look at blueprints, and I go, I, I have such a great analytical mind. I'm going to look at this, and I'm going to have a perfect mm. representation in my brain. I looked at it, and I was just like, oh, man, it's just lines again. <laughs> I said, this is going to be awesome, Dad. I can't wait. That surprises me, because you look like an above-ground pool engineer. I know. Thank you. I do. I thank you. That's <laughs> the nicest. Is he doing hot tub too? Is it a no combo? Just, just cold. <sighs> I know. Broke bitch. Couldn't get a fucking hot tub. <laughs> but whatever. Does whatever. he have dreams of moving to Florida? No, he wants to stay in Northeast Philly and All swim right. in his in ground pool. Florida life, but in Philly. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta bring the beach to you. Fucking bitch. Yeah. That's my that's my W this summer. Anyway, I just wanted to I just wanted to if if you're familiar with how the the, uh, the plots of land look in Northeast Philadelphia, it's just a funny little visual to throw in there for you, and I just wanted to give it to you guys before we head out. Yeah, I I like the idea of the engineer back there. The engineer, <laughs> like, uh, okay. <laughs> 
yeah, I, I guess we could backfill six feet of where it slopes down in the in the rear there. <laughs> uh, Just picture in some like northeast Philly, like John Nash, like having equations put out before him. <laughs> as he's thinking, like, it's just different ways that he can like get back at his ex wife instead of actual math <laughs> equations. Yeah, just the guy in a hard hat who didn't finish high school. <laughs> Going like, yeah, this should be safe. <laughs> and we'll fucking nail it, baby. Yeah. Well, this is it. We got to run. Um, join us over at patreon.com slash podcast. Brother, you have some big shows coming up. Tell them about them. Oh, this week. Two days from now, I'll be in Connecticut. Waterbury, Connecticut. Actually, there's only two tickets left for that. And I, uh, hopefully they're already gone. But if not... I, I hope what actually happens is it's not a couple. I hope two weird guys each buy one ticket and they come to Connecticut on Thursday night. You can go to timbarterly.com, by the way, to, to scoop those up. And then in Friday night, I'm in Boston at the Rockwell Theater. It's this little, it's this tiny little theater that that I th- it looks like it's going to be pretty cool. And then we can obviously get high as fuck afterwards and 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 really enjoy ourselves this weekend obviously and also come see me in Pottstown, pennsylvania at soul Joel's in may and um i'm going i'm heading out uh midwest and west uh later this year again timbutterly.com also watch tim butterly show uh, on my youtube channel uh tim butterly and follow me on twitch and twitter and just you know please please keep up with me i want to you know share my time with you thank you dan what do you want to promote uh, follow me on Instagram, Danny Dubs, D-U-B-Z, and follow Good Boy underscore comedy. We're working on a lot of big projects, a lot of new content with all the boys this uh, summer, sketches, live shit, ton of fun over there. Hit them with the big things coming, y'all. Big things coming, y'all. And uh, me, Rob, and Shaner are working on a fun little new project, a little oh, sick. easy weekly content for you guys to consume. Ooh. Don't say consume anymore. I didn't like that. Consume. No. Consume me. Different word. Suck. Yeah, chug. So- chug. <laughs> more, more content yeah. for you guys to chug. And that's only if you thug. <laughs> there you go. Hell yeah. Rob, do you want to put anything out there? Direct the deer tag. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Dude, uh, might be. And I'll, I'll be with Tim this weekend. Hell yeah. Or this week. Uh, do rag uh, might be the funniest podcast out there. So Brother, I just want to say that. Thank you. Oh, and we'll we'll be together in Mississippi. Uh, I can't wait, man. Uh, that, that shit's gonna be so. Fun. I'm especially excited because Naeem's nervous about going to the deep south. So, <laughs> so we gotta protect <laughs> Naeem at all costs, man. Yeah, we'll we'll form a circle around him. Mm-hmm. We'll we'll have a perimeter of salt, so Dude. none of their hate spells can penetrate. Them. Do you guys yeah. know anything about the North South uh, rivalry in in black people? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. This might just be on Reddit. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the cities you're fine. I think yeah. it's when you're in the sticks, you gotta you gotta get worried. No, they think all they think they, they each side think the north thinks the south is soft and vice versa. And mm. so I don't know, Naeem might get swung on. Oh no. Well he's gonna have a circle of men around him. And, uh, yes. <laughs> um I got some live shows coming up uh April fifth, so I guess it's next week. Uh me, Jake Matera, and John Del Calo are gonna be in Boston at White Bull Tavern. Uh I think there's like twenty tickets left for that. The next night we'll be in Hartford. Uh, there's still a shit ton of tickets left for that. Uh, I'll be with Rob and the Durag Boys, Columbus, Mississippi, uh, April 12th and 13th. Soul Joel's April 27th. And then Chicago. Little Stinkers is coming to Chicago. Uh, the May 25th show is sold out, so thanks for making that happen. And the 26th, uh, the next night, we added a second show, and there's six tickets left for that. So you can buy tickets um, by going to uh, the link in my Twitter profile or my Instagram profile, and that's at Mike Rainey 82 so thanks to everybody. Oh, I'm excited. I got. I'm working on a new book now, so I just want to make people aware of it. It's coming out this summer. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's a um, a retarded wigger crime novel. So it uh, it's going to be a special treat for you. I do have a question <laughs> about that. Are there any lovemaking scenes in it? Yeah, uh, I've written one so far, and it's pretty gross. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going to yeah. write some more though. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I can't wait. And uh, yeah, if you're up for it, I would love your voice talents again for the. Uh, of course. For the audio book, man. Duh. Damn. But yeah, gonna have a, a print version, ebook copy, audio book version, and I want to get all the boys involved in because everybody really brought it to life with own perks. So I look forward to that happening. It's also releasing book. on Nextel chirp phone. Yeah. <laughs> you can only get it on your Nextel chirp. Yeah. You can only get it on Obama phone. So, yeah. so look out for that notification. 
But a lot of cool stuff happened. I just want to say I'm proud of you guys. Like, everybody's doing really cool shit. Oh, thank you. We're all fucking cooking right now, and it's cool that everybody's just fucking killing it, man. Oh, yeah. Medieval times. It's happening. Oh, yeah. God damn it. Hey, real quick. So for Medieval times, I think I think we have to... I, I don't know. Look, I don't know what to do yet, but if you do it as a group, we, we'd have to collect everyone's, uh, like fee and then make one transaction with okay. it okay and i guess we could manage that or is the alternative that we all uh, just agree to pick a, a a a time and night and all if we're doing the weekend sure. they do sell out yeah anyway i we're gonna have a meeting about that right after this and uh we'll update the patreon accordingly so okay do you think the date's going to change do we announce the date April 26th. April 26th. Uh, no, the, the date does not have to change at all. Okay. April 26th is when we're planning to do this. Hell or high water, it's April 26th. Okay. I shouldn't have said hell or high water, but that's what, we're, <laughs> that's what, I'm, that's what I'm using. I'm using my project management skills to uh, make it happen. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. We'll see you on the Patreon, patreon.com slash podcast. Pay whatever you want. Just join us over there in about 10 minutes. We'll be back with more Danny Dubs. Later, guys. Peace.